Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. How Wonderful. six figure trade. Okay, Alex, we'll, we'll just let you get uh, started again. As usual, we'll, we'll, we'll take questions as we go, but people are here to, to hear you, not me, so I'll hand over. Alex on Traders Corner, take it away. Thank you very much. So welcome, everybody, to this webinar. Thank you to Simon um, and Round the Clock Trader, obviously, for putting all of these fantastic events on. In today's webinar, we're going to talk about the six-figure trade, how one trade idea made us a six-figure return, and how you can learn from it. And when I was putting that title together the other day of my brother, I just have to apologize. If any of you guys have ever seen Zoolander, um, it really, really reads like the Zoolander school for kids that can't read good. So apologies, but we wanted to get all of that information in there for you. Before we proceed, we need to do that usual thing and go through the disclaimer, which is to say the content of this webinar is not investment advice and should be used purely for educational purposes only. All participants are advised to seek their own counsel prior to investing or entering into any trade. Spread betting and any other type of financial trading carries a high level of risk to your capital of the possibility of losing considerably more than your initial investment. The content of this webinar may not be suitable for all investors and an individual should ensure that they're fully aware of the risks involved and if necessary you should seek the advice of an independent financial advisor. Wonderful. Now that we have that out of the way, just a quick note to people, I know that you know this if you've attended these events before, but if you haven't, to get the most out of the events, please try and kind of stay focused. So silence your phones, turn off any emails, Facebook. I know that sometimes you like to have you know, these things just running in the background um, whilst you're doing other things. But honestly, to get the most out of it, just give us your attention for the next 30 to 40 minutes. I promise you it will not be a waste of your time. In today's webinar, I'm going to walk you through a trade that made my brother and I a six-figure return back in about 2012. Okay, I'm then going to walk you through another more recent trade in the same pair that also made us a, a substantial return. The idea behind this approach to doing a webinar is that we want to teach you through actual trades as opposed to just looking at theory. You know, I know that we've been guilty of it in the past and others do, we get, they kind of just or we, sorry, um, we sort of look at theory, we look at hypotheticals and things like that to try and demonstrate techniques and strategies, but we thought that for a change we'll talk you through some some trades that, um, that we've taken and how we manage them. And it's kind of a different approach that Nikki and I decided to take in 2017, um, particularly with our members, is to really sort of show you how things work in the trenches. So everything looks lovely on a screen, um, it looks lovely in screenshots and stuff like that, um, but we kind of want to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly of trading because we think that that's really the best way to get points across. So we'll see how that goes today, and you can let us know if you enjoyed it at the end. Um, now, shameless bribe, all right? I know that everybody, uh, well, not everybody, but some people, you switch off halfway through, you'll go and do other things, um, and then you'll come back later on, or I might say something that you, you're not particularly interested in, or you think you're not interested in, like fundamentals. Everybody jumps off of the, the webinar after I say that. Um, and then you walk away and you come back later. But if you stick um, through the webinar and you watch everything that we want to show you, um, because I promise you, you're going to find it um, very, very valuable, then at the end we have a super, super special free gift for you. Um, and I promise you, it's, it's absolutely not one that you're going to want to miss. It's actually, um, it's ridiculous what it is that we're going to, going to give you at the end. I was speaking to my brother again, just talking about the way that we're going to do things this year. And one of the things that we said is that we want to do some stuff that people think is just absolutely ridiculous. Like it's things that they would be paying thousands of pounds for. We want to start giving that stuff away. So uh, if you stick around to the end, you'll see what I'm talking about there. All right. So who is this webinar for? Well, if you've tried a number of different strategies in the past, but you've yet to find something that's profitable for you or suits your personality, you are in the right place. If you're looking for a way of supplementing or replacing your income, but you don't particularly have a, you know, a large starting bank, then you know what? You're in the right place. This webinar is going to show you some techniques that you're really, really going to like. Um, and if you're brand new to trading and you just don't know where to start, then you know what? There are worse places to start than what we're about to show you on this webinar here. So the trades I want to talk to you about today, they share one very, very common theme. They, com they combine a fundamental idea with technical entries. 
All right. Now these types of trades, they nearly always outperform those trades that are based solely just on technicals or just on fundamentals. So we want to show you how they can actually both work in harmony because what we found is people are under the mistaken impression that you kind of, you're either a technical trader or you're a fundamental trader. But actually, if, you, if you're both of those traders at the same time and you take a fundamental idea and wait, wait for technical entries, then you're going to find that your strike rate goes up, your profitability goes up, and your overall stress goes down. So let's give you a little bit of background of the trade idea, and then we'll go into the technical setups. Because everything, well not everything, we, we have some other shorter term tactical um, sort of technical trades, but our longer term trades, the trades we put our big money on, um, they follow this sort of a process where we will have a fundamental idea and when I say we, um, I should really give most of the credit to my brother because he's the guy that really, really likes the fundamentals, you know, is very, very good at them. Um, so he'll mainly come up with a fundamental idea and then what I'll do is I'll look for the technical entries for them. And I understand that um, people out there listening won't necessarily have the benefit of a Nikki sat next to you doing the fundamental stuff for you, but it's actually not that complicated once you sort of get your head around it. So the trade that we're talking about uh, is, hello? I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. Um, you can hear me, um, but I'm just, can I ask people at home, one or two people are just saying they're having problems with the sound, so could we get a uh, just an indication through the chat box with the why to let us know that you're hearing uh, Alex, okay. Can you hear me? I can you hear you. Okay. The major yes, overwhelming majority are, are fine. Okay. Roy, I, well, you won't be able to hear me, Roy, but I will, uh, I'll send a, t a message back to you telling you that it's, uh, it must be a localized problem. Okay. So let's interrupt, Alex. Carry on. Thank you. No problem at all. So the trade that we're talking about is one that we initiated back in 2012. It was in a pair called the dollar yen, and we'll go over to the chart in a minute. Now, the reasoning behind this trade to start with, all right, was at the time the yen had been strengthening massively due to the safe haven flows and the unwinding of the carry trade, and the general kind of risk off sentiment that dominated the markets from pretty much from sort of like 2000, 2000, uh, 2000, 2007, 2008. Um, and what happened back in that time, for those of you that haven't been trading for that long, is obviously we had the financial crisis. And what investors were doing is they were kind of, they were less motivated by, um, by making money and they were more motivated by just protecting what they had. And back prior to 2000, 2000, and 2007, 2008, you had something called the carry trade. Well, you still have the carry trade, but it was very much in vogue back then, particularly with the yen pairs. And what that was, was if you imagine in Japan, they had very, very low interest rates and zero um, cent interest rates for a long time. If you borrowed money in that sort of an environment, it didn't really cost you anything to, to borrow money, right? So what you would do is you'd borrow money from a place where interest rates were particularly low and you would put it into a place where you would get higher interest rates. So, you know, the U.S. at the time was sort of 4 or 5%. Um, the U.K. was the same um, and other places were higher. So what you would have going up to that, um, to the financial crisis, is if you look at any of the yen charts, they're all at sort of like their highs. And what had happened over a period of time is that this this carry trade had kind of, um, snowboard and people were taking money out of the yen um, and they were putting it into places where they would get a high yield because if you think about it, it is kind of like a, a no risk trade as long as the exchange rate doesn't go against you which it wouldn't because everybody's in the same sort of taking the same trade as long as the exchange rate doesn't go against you you're kind of getting free money you're borrowing in a place for zero percent so you could borrow let's say hypothetically I don't know um, a million pounds and then you invest it in a place, you, put it, you just put it into a savings account or you put it into you know, treasuries where you might get 5%, for example. So you're borrowing in a place where you've got 0%, you put it in a place where you've got 5% um, and you're making free money. And lots of people did this. And what that did over a period of time is it really devalued the Japanese yen, um, which was fine by, for the Japanese because their, their economy is based on exports, so a weak yen makes their products more attractive, so that's fine by them. But what happened with the financial crisis is that suddenly people didn't want yield. Suddenly people were looking for safety, so what happens? 
you take your money out of where you'd invested it previously, okay, and you basically you 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 close all of the trades. So you put you give everything back, and to give everything back, what they then have to do is they then need to um, take it back to the Japanese yen, right? Because that's where they borrowed it in the first place. And this is what the unwinding of the carry trade ultimately was. I mean, it's a little bit more complex than that, but that's uh, a summary, and hopefully that helps you helps explain what I'm talking about here. So that's what really sort of started to get the, the yen to strengthen during that time and leading up to that time. Then we had the earthquake and the tsunami in 2011, um, which basically exacerbated the strong yen moves. Okay, and why, the reason for that was insurance companies were repatriating their funds to sort of finance the rebuild pro process. And you ask, well, why is that important? Well, again, just going back to what I was saying earlier, Japan is heavily reliant on exports, and the stronger their currency is, um, the less attractive it's going to be to you know to uh, to other countries, all right, and to people purchasing the products from Japan, and that's going to hurt the overall the company's profitability. So then, what we had during this time is that the yen was getting very very strong, just like ridiculous levels, and the the Bank of Japan up until that point were kind of um, they were jawboning the yen lower, so they would say things like, you know, we're not scared to intervene in the markets, and they would, you know, try, try and talk it lower or talk the dollar yen pair higher, right? Um, and that was working to an extent, but not, you know, it, it wasn't sustained. And then you would have like these spikes in the market, which you thought was central bank intervention, but wasn't necessarily confirmed. And then what started to happen is we would then get confirmed. Um, acts of intervention in the market, which was approved by the G7. And what that meant for us was that if the G7 are approving it, then suddenly we have, we have something quite meaningful here. We have a floor where we know that the central banks are going to protect it. Now, a very quick sort of like um, digress for, for a very quick moment. Um, and talk about the Swiss National Bank because inevitably there are going to be some of you there that may re remember a few years ago when the Swiss National Bank removed the floor um, from the euro franc and the euro franc went from like 120 to 0 0.90 in you know a sp in the space of minutes and everybody you know lost their shirts and say well why would you do that um, knowing something like that could happen and there's there, there are two reasons one that event hadn't actually occurred at that particular moment in time. This was before that. But number two, it was it was actually quite different because the Swiss National Bank, prior to removing the floor a couple of years ago, had spent a year or two basically really, really defending that level. So it kind of became a known level in the markets. And you had a build-up of stop losses behind that level. Okay, the, what we had with the dollar yen, we didn't have that at that moment in time because it was just the Bank of Japan were just starting to say that they were going to intervene in the market. So you didn't quite have that big build up of stop losses beneath a level that would have taken us down to ridiculous levels. Um, so we saw that as being um, a clear stop loss. We also thought that um, the US economy was going to, was um, showing signs of recovery and our thought process was kind of, well, we've got huge upside potential here because if we look at where the, the dollar yen came from initially, now if you look at any of the charts, it was like up at 120, 130. Right now, we're kind of playing with the 77, 78 level. You know, our stop loss is down at the 76 level. We've got a massive upside potential here um, for very, very little risk. And fund fundamentally, we think that this pair is not going to stay here forever and it's at least going to go up towards the sort of 100 level, if not significantly higher. Not necessarily in a week or two weeks, but over a course of you know weeks, months, and maybe even years. We also had the 10-year Treasury yields, okay, which are highly correlated to the dollar yen, um, and they were showing signs of bottoming in 2012 as well. So basically, we expected this yield differential to also support um, the dollar yen going higher. Um, so the fundamental picture was supportive, was supportive, the technicals were starting to line up, and we had a clear stop loss due to the Bank of Japan uh, Ministry, uh, Ministry of Finance intervention. Just before we go over to the charts, just to show you what I mean by the, the yields, this is a dollar yen chart with the 10-year yields um, overlaid on top of it. The orange one 
um, as the yields and the candlestick chart is the dollar yen. What you can see here, okay, as you can see that the market had been trending down, and then at this point in sort of August type time, the market then, um, the 10-year Treasury yields then broke up above structure. And we all know if we're technical, technical traders that structure is very important. So if something breaks up above structure, that's an indication that we've got a bit of a trend change on our hands. Now, we don't get involved in the trade just because we see that. We get involved, that kind of alerts us to the fact that our fundamental reasoning could hold some weight. So then we start looking for opportunities to express this in the, in the dollar-yen pair. Okay, so combining the fundamental reasoning with technical analysis, it makes for very, very, very big winners, which is what I'm going to show you. It doesn't always work out, but if you can catch the dominant theme, okay, in the markets, then you are going to have a few big winners every year. So let's jump over to the live charts and look at the technical picture for a moment. This is the dollar yen back then in 2012, all right? This... It, and it had been sort of at this level for a long, long period of time. As you can see from here, back in 2011, it was getting weaker, weaker, weaker. Um, and then it starts moving sideways. August is where I said the yields bottomed. Okay, so that kind of alerted us to the fact that we want to be involved in this trade for sure. We initiated this trade when the market rejected, with a bullish engulfing candle over here, rejected the support level that it, it had been playing with for, for the majority of the year. Okay, so this support level here, the market went below it. When the market breaks structure, it tends to be an indication that it wants to go in a certain direction. However, one of the greatest signs and one of my favorite trades is when the market breaks structure but fails to do what you expect. So if you think about all of the stop losses that will be accumulated below this level here, you'd expect it to move lower, but no. The very next day, you get this sort of action here. So the market climbs all the way back above. You get a bullish engulfing candle. So we initiated our first, our first trade at this level here. We then had to sit with it while the market went sideways for a little bit um, until eventually, on my brother's birthday, the market then broke out above this level, uh, well, above another structure level, being this one over here. And what we did is that we added a second trade to our portfolio there because... The lesson to do with people that have a smaller bank size is to wait for the trades like this and then really, really add to your position because that's where you get the big winners. You know, we can be profitable on, you know, the majority of our trades, but the ones that really, really make us money are the ones where we add to the position and add to the position. Psychologically, that's a difficult thing to deal with. You don't want to add to a position because you feel like you don't want to lose money to start with, right? And you feel like whilst you're adding to a position, you're not just going to lose the money that you already have on the table because of the profit, but then you're going to lose the money on that position if it goes against you and it's going to kind of um, kill you on both sides. But as much as that is scary, it is something that you, you do need to learn to do because in the long run, that's going to make you a lot of money. So we added to the position here again. Um, the market then continued to go up and it broke, and if I zoom out here for a second, the market then broke structure again at this level over here, which is where we added to the position again. We then held the, held the trade and we didn't add any more after this point. We then held the trade and basically came out of the trade when the market um, came up, broke up above here, then came back down and broke this mini structure level to the left. By that point in time, we had a significant amount of profit on the table. Um, yes, we could have held it for longer. As we said, we're kind of expecting it to, to go you know, towards 100 and beyond. Um, but by the time it got up to this level, it had already hit 100. It was coming back. It had um, broken the structure level. And we thought, you know what? We've got a massive amount of profit on the table. Let's just take it off and wait for the next move. Okay, then obviously later on we got in again when the market started to break this structure, but that's for another time. So that's that particular trade there. The lesson for that trade is that you always want to, you want to combine fundamentals and technicals because they, they basically always make for better trades, all right? They take, they take longer to develop, absolutely. You're going to hold them for a much longer period of time, but the benefit is that when you actually get them right, which will be more often than not, if you're just trading you know, technicals or fundamentals in isolation, you're going to make a serious return on your capital. You know, that trade there made my brother and I well into six figures. 
All right, but you guys and girls probably don't have the same size trading account. So let's talk a little bit about what it could have made you and what it could have made the average trader. So let's do some rough math on what the return was in terms of, in terms of pips, just to show you the potential. So let's say that you were trading for as small as one pound per point, okay? Now we know that your stop loss was below the 76 level, so you're on your initial trade, your stop loss would have been about 200 pounds, all right? So one pound per pip on each of the three positions. The first position would have, well, the first position moved 1,900 pips and would have made you a 1,900 pound return. The second trade moved 1,600 pips and would have made you a 1,600 pound return. The final trade moved just under 1,300 pips and would have made you about a 1,300 pound return. So that trade is a total profit of 4,800 pound for very, very little stress and trade management. Now, I was talking to one of our members about this and they actually quite rightly said to me, well, you say it's less stress, but surely it's more stressful holding a trade where you're making a lot of money. Um, and my reply to that is, you are, you are right, but it's a different kind of stress. It's an easier one to learn to get around than that stress of making mistakes, taking losses, looking for the next trading strategy, making more mistakes, taking more losses. That's a worse cycle to be in than learning how to control your emotions when you're making money. Okay, so that's just my personal opinion. So I say very little stress in trade management. Yes, there would have been an element of stress there, but significantly less um, than losing money on a consistent basis and being in and out of the market over and over again and inventing trades that don't really exist. Now I know what you're thinking. This is just one perfect example, right? Lightning never strikes twice and perhaps we were just lucky. Nope, none of the above. These opportunities, they present themselves over and over again. The secret is knowing how to spot them. So what I want to do is I want to give you another example taken from our Money File Report just before Christmas. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Money File Report is a report that my brother and I do every single week, and we send out to our members where we basically cover all of the trades that we are looking at for the week ahead. And in there, we will define the fundamental reasoning, the technical reasoning, all of that kind of good stuff. And I'm going to give you an example from that so that you know that this stuff actually does exist, and it's not done with just the benefit of hindsight. So this was sent out to our members back in November. All right, and I'm going to read it for you. I know you can all read, but it's a webinar, so I'm gonna read it for you anyway. So we said, long dollar yen, medium term. Whilst the flooding into the, into the JPY on the back of Trump winning the presidential election was predicted, the short, extreme short-term nature was a surprise. Uh, surprise. What this tells us is that the underlying sentiment towards the dollar yen is actually bullish. So what we're saying there is that when Trump won the election, the dollar yen did sell off a little bit, but it was bought back very, very quickly. The election result reinforces our longer term view of dollar bullishness, okay? The three, three major policy initiatives being the fiscal stimulus, government spending, stuff like that, trade, okay, so the protectionism that Trump is talking about, and corporate tax reform, in terms of making it more attractive for companies to bring their, their profits back into the US and hence pay tax in the US, are likely to be positive for the, for the US dollar. And the market's focus on reflation should push the dollar higher against the lower yielders like the dollar yen. It's looking like Trump's victory is now being viewed as a catalyst for an uptick in domestic growth. As a result, we expect the Fed to go ahead with a rate hike in December. And obviously, as we know, the Fed did raise hikes, uh, raise hikes, hike rates in December, and they also indicated that they would continue to do so through to about 2019, um, sort of targeting around the 3% type mark. The implementation of fiscal spending policies looks to be a real possibility as a single party controls the presidency and the Congress. For many years, the burden of stimulus of growth has fallen at the feet of the Fed and monetary policy controls. A pledge to increase fiscal spending will rebalance this dynamic. Again, we view this as being positive for the dollar in the medium term. The boost in growth feeds into our reflation story with inflation likely to climb. Uh, we expect yields to rally from the lows. Um, this is positive for the, uh, for the dollar yen, and then we say check out the charts on the following page. And here we say that we're bullish on the dollar yen from a fundamental and technical perspective, 
we'll be looking for an increase in long exposure as the dollar yen breaks above 107.43, which is where we initiated our first position, um, and then initially looking at a first objective, see how the market reacts at 111, um, and then eventually at 116. Then on the next page, we go on to say the dollar yen correlation with, guess what, the 10-year yields, which is what we talked about earlier. As mentioned previously, we expect yields to rally from the lows as a positive growth um, potentially pushes inflation higher. What you can see here on this chart is that the 10-year the yields have jumped there. The dollar yen we know is correlated to that, so we know it's going to chase it up at some point. As yields increase, um, uh, well, 10-year yields are positively correlated to the dollar yen. As yields increase, the dollar yen will benefit from the positive rate differential. We view this as an important tailwind to the, to the dollar against lower yielding currencies. So again, I know that this is all, uh, all fundamental stuff, and some of you might be switching off, but I really, really urge you not to do that because this is going to really, really make um, your trading. This is going to take you from being a trader that's struggling to a trader that's consistently ma making money. Um, and then we go on on this page here to talk again about the 10-year the yields. But you've had enough of that. Let's go and take a look at the live charts to see how we played this particular um, trade here. So what did we say? We said that we would look to um, initiate our positions at 107. This is where we got in here. We then see how the market reacts at the 111 level, which it broke through, and we added another trade here. And then the market eventually started to turn around once it hit the 116 and exceeded the 116 level, and we eventually took our profits on this trade at the 115 level. Okay, so we've got 750 pips worth of profit on the first trade there. If you, um, with your account, were trading at one pound a point, that would be 750 pound return on one position. You then get into the next position at 1150 for a 350 pip return. That's a 350 pound return. That's a thousand pound return on those two positions there. Okay, the entries are very, very easy. Technical breaks above structure. So the market breaks out above this level you enter. The market comes to this level, we want to see what the reaction is. Massive break through that level, wait for a pullback to it, you get in again at that level. When the market shows, when it proves to you that it doesn't want to break back down below that level. So you look to see that it holds the level, right? And this is what I mean about bringing the technical picture um, in with the fundamentals. So you have a fundamental bias to start with, and then you execute according to the technicals. Um, and as I said, this wasn't done with the benefit of hindsight. You know, this is something, you know, we aren't just saying this. This is something that we sent out to all of our money file members back in November. Um, so, you know, this, this is the way that, that trading is done um, in the trenches, so to speak. So as you can see, this is not mystical. It's not magic it's basically just logic and common sense. It's about making connections with different markets and then using them to give you clues about the future. In this webinar, you've learned that the 10-year um, US Treasury yields are positively correlated to the dollar yen. All right, that's what you've learned. Your job as a trader is now to go and find other markets that can give you clues as to what's going to happen in the future as well. So. That wraps up the presentation part of this um, webinar here. I'd like to thank you all for sticking with me, if you've stuck with me for this long. For those of you that have just stuck with me for the gift, fair play to you, that, that's fine too. <laughs> um, at least you've listened to me, and maybe some of what I've said has kind of um, sunk in a little bit and is something that at least you will entertain. So what's this free gift that I'm talking about? Well. We've talked to you a lot about fundamentals. We've talked to you a lot about technicals. I think what we've done in this webinar here is probably shown you the benefit of both and the benefit of how you can use them um, to make profitable trading decisions. But we haven't necessarily, and there wouldn't be enough time in just the 40 minutes here to give you all of the information you need to then go and implement this in the markets. So what have we done? We've done something that's absolutely ridiculous. We've taken one of our premium products, okay, which is the Forex Masterclass, um, and that's not and that's not just one of those sort of intro courses that are a bunch of five-minute videos. This is one of our premium products, okay. We usually sell this on our website for 500 pounds and above, and it's cheap even at that. 
but we're going to give you that for free today. Okay, so you're going to get access to the Forex Master Class absolutely free because you're here on the round the clock trader and it's something that we talked to Simon about and we agreed that you know we need to give you something special. In addition to that, so whilst you've got the course to teach you everything, to give you all of the instruction, we're also going to give you two additions to our money file absolutely free. Now, you guys aren't silly. We're not silly. Why are we giving you two additions to the money file? One, to help you, of course, but two, to demonstrate to you how valuable it can be as a trading tool. It's one of the products that we sell on our website, and we would love for you all to be members, but we know that you, know, you take enough risk in this game. You take risk every day by putting on a trade. So what we're doing right here is we want to give you something where there's absolutely no risk at all. We're not asking for any payment of anything, any credit card details, nothing at all. We just simply want to give you a, a, a video course that's absolutely unbelievable, um, and I can't believe it's free, but we've done, done it that way for you. And we're giving you two editions of the money file. Why are we giving you two editions of the money file? Like I said, because we hope that after seeing that, you will think, wow, this is amazing stuff, and maybe you will become a subscriber of ours one day. If not, that's fine. You've still got the Forex Masterclass. Um, you've still got all of the tutorials to make you profitable. The Forex Masterclass contains over five hours of video tutorials where we teach you all of the important concepts you need to be a successful trader. Okay, we're gonna teach you everything that we talked about in this webinar here. So you're going to learn about the fundamentals and the technicals so that you're able to spot the trades like the ones we talked about today. You'll receive email support from Nikki and I. So if you've got any questions, okay, then just drop us an email. Um, please don't make it war and peace because those emails are difficult to answer. But if it's just sort of general conceptual um, questions, pop us across from me an email and we'll be happy to help you. And most importantly, you're getting it absolutely free. You're not paying a penny. Like I said, we're not asking for any credit card details, nothing like that. We're just giving you access to this and hopefully you absolutely love it. The money file editions, when you sign up for the course, we'll also give you two free editions to the money file. Um, you will receive a rundown of every trade that we're looking at, um, looking at taking before we've even taken, taken them. In the money file reports, as you just saw, we're talking about both the fundamentals and the technicals. Um, I say the fundamentals were applicable because we also do talk about some shorter term, more tactical trades that aren't fundamentally based, but just ba purely based on technical momentum. Um, for those of you that like some shorter term trades. Um, and ultimately, it's like you looking over our shoulders while we plan our moves in the market. So we think with a combination of both of those, it really should put you on the, the right track to being a successful trader. To access it, I wanted to have a more user-friendly URL, but unfortunately our redirects and stuff was not working when we tested it this morning. So we've kind of had to scramble and give you these really, really ugly URLs here. Either one of them works. So whichever one you want to note down, um, please feel free. Please bear in mind that the top one is case sensitive, but hopefully Simon uh, will post both of those links in the chat box for you. Um, apart from that, thank you very, very, very much for, oh, he's already posted. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for, for watching, um, and we can now open up the floor to any questions that you may have. So please feel free, Simon, to, to fire That's them out. Lovely, Alex. Thank you. Yes, we have posted that oh. link in the chat box, the, the bit they want. So if anybody's having any problems with that, do let us know. Um, but I've tested it myself, and it seems to be working fine. Um, great. Anthony says, thank you, Alex. Good presentation. It's made me think differently, uh, which is great. Uh, Steve says he's already an existing member of Traders Corner and that he subscribes to the money file already. He's not paid to say this, he's a, it's pains to, to say that, but uh, he just is a fan of the master class. Uh, the money file takes your trade into the next level and profit. Can't recommend it highly enough. There we are. So great Thank testimony much, from sir. Steve. Burke. Thank you, Steve. Um, Ian says, great. Um, what are your risk per trade? 1% or above? Asks Tina. Um, generally speaking, for my brother and I, our risk per trade is, is lower than that. It's about a quarter of a percent. Um, but as a new trader, I understand that a quarter of a percent isn't necessarily going to mean very much at all. Um, so the most we'd recommend is about 1%. If you're feeling particularly aggressive, 2%. Um, but from our perspective, with those trades that we're talking about there, we generally risk about a quarter of a percent.
uh, trade. Fabulous. Um, what about moving averages? What moving averages would you use? I, I personally love the 100 moving average. Um, I've played with different combinations in the past, so um, if I were to, I've played with like the three moving average thing. I quite like the 25, the 55, and the 100 together. But the 100 for me, exponential moving average, that is, is the one that really just gives me a nice view on the markets and the rest of the stuff I try to do technically um, just by looking at the price action. Okay, I think that answers. Uh, Robert uh, was asking about the moving average on the. Uh, the yellow Japanese yen, the white ELD. What's what what for its currency is yield. that? It's not. It, that was that was us showing you the yield. It's not oh, the. Sorry. So on it says what moving average was you were using on the yield Japanese yen slide, and uh, that, line. that wasn't a moving average. So that was the Treasury yield overlaid onto the Japanese yen chart. Um, and if there was a moving average, I forget it would have been the one hundred. Fabulous. Okay. Uh, so here it was asking. He says at a pound a pip, where is the stop loss, and how much money do you need to have in an account to trade at one pound a pip with good risk management? Um, so at a pound a pip, the stop loss was just below the seventy-six level. The initial trade that you had on um, was initiated at seventy-eight, so it would have been about two hundred pounds um, risk on the table. So as I said, depending on how aggressive you're feeling, we generally wouldn't re recommend that you. Um, risk too much, um, so on that basis you'd probably be looking at about £10,000 in an account. If you didn't have that, and let's say for example you had £1,000 um, in an account, then you would be looking at use, putting 10p on um, per pip, but even doing that, that trade at 10p per pip still would have netted you at the end just under £500. Where can the yield chart be found, asks Peter. Um, so we do it on tradingview.com. Um, it's actually become my favorite charting platform in the last year to two years. I absolutely love TradingView. You get everything on there. Um, you can have it all for free. If you like, if you want some extended features, then you have to pay for them. But everything that you need, you get it for free. And you can get stocks on there. You can get commodities. Um, literally anything you can think of is available. Sorry. For the most TradingView.com? Trading yes. Oh, great. Okay, I'll just put that link as well. Yeah, it's hands down the best charting platform I've ever used. And it's available, and it's, it's internet-based as well, which is great. So, you know, I've got all of my charts saved on there, and I can go from my um, MacBook, which I'm on right now, to my desktop, which is next to me, and the charts update. So if I do something on this, on my MacBook here, or updates on my desktop as well. If I don't have access to either of them and I'm at a friend's house, I can jump onto their computer and go to tradingview.com and have my exact same setup as well. So it's, it's completely revolutionized the amount of equipment that I have and carry around with me, to be honest. That's clever. That's clever. Everybody's going to be mobile uh, these days. Now, um, do you have a, a Twitter account, uh, Robert's asking? I do. Um, I'm not nearly as um, active as I should be, and that's one of the things I aim to change in 2017. It's Alex Ong UK. So at Alex Ong UK. At Alex Ong UK. Yeah. I think uh, we're already friends, if you like. Is that the word for we Twitter? Are, we are <laughs> indeed. We follow each other, and okay. on Instagram as well. Same handle on Instagram. Um, I'm actually. Look at, I'm trying to use that a little bit more than Twitter now, so I kind of feel that Twitter's a little bit noisy. Um, mm. So, I mean, for my feed anyway, there's just hundreds of thousands of messages, um, and Instagram seems to be a little less noisy in that respect. So, if you want to find me on Instagram, it's at Alexong UK as well. Same one. Uh, when you talk about 10 pence per pip, uh, asks Catherine, could you tell us which brokers offer that? I'm with IG and can't trade micro lots like that. Thanks. Um, okay, so FXCM provides that functionality. Um, I believe GKFX do as well. I don't have an account with them, um, so I don't know. But I, I know for a fact that FXCM do if you open up a regular broker account with them. 
Um, to be honest, there, there are more out there, but we don't have accounts. We so we we do, we don't know. But there, I know for a fact there are because I know some of our members have them. And I think yeah, Paul's saying yes, they do um, here as well. So, uh, do you share charts on TradingView? Um, uh, I don't. Yeah. I, I see that people do it, but it, I think it's just it's a combination of laziness um, and wanting to keep the good stuff for our members. Um, so we we do post some stuff every now and then. Just you know, let, let's be honest, we're we're a business, so just to kind of keep up the social media presence, if you like. But one of the things, maybe I don't know, right you or wrongly, that Nikki and I feel is that our members are the most important people. So we tend not to spend as much time trying to get new customers, so to speak, and more time on making sure that what we do. Um, benefits our members, so it's probably not the best business decision in the world, but it's just the way that we do things. Well, we're hearing at two o'clock from our sponsors at uh, Pelican Exchange, who oh. is launching the new um, trading app, uh, and it's wonderful. In fact, we've got a round-the-clock trader group uh, on there, and uh, oh, wow. we're encouraging people just to just to download it. It just takes a second or two to download it on your phone. Uh, it works very much like WhatsApp. We can What's create. It at pelicanexchange.com. Okay, I'll take a look at that. So, it's something that uh, we think is going to be used in increasingly more by by trading mentors who can uh, set up uh, trading groups. But you can even just set it up with with your your friends, family, um, anybody that, that wants to. Very much like you set up groups on WhatsApp. Uh, but if you go to that pelicanexchange.com, download the app, uh, have a look for uh, the round the clock trader group. Okay. And, uh, we're trying to encourage people to exchange ideas because this question box that we use is great, but not everybody can see uh, the questions. So yeah. if we if we refer people to this round the clock trader group, it means that we can talk, we can interact with the speakers, and we can talk to each other as well. Um, so that's the place to go. I'll, I'll put the the the, uh, the address there for that. But it's a it's a it's a handsome little uh, app. And uh, I hope it's going to be useful for a lot of us to use. No, that's there, good. There's, uh, there's something else I saw that um, I'm looking into that looks quite good as well. Whilst we're do. talking about this, which more people might want to look into, something called Anchor, mm -hmm. um, and it's sort of like a Twitter with voice, so you can kind of have voice memos going back and forward. So, for example, I could say, wake up in the morning, and to a group, to my group, say. I'm looking at euro dollar at the moment. Looks pretty good. If it breaks out above this level, then you know I might buy. And then just post that there. Then people can then send their voice messages back saying I like that, but what about this? And so it's like a it's like a Twitter or Instagram for voice. Pretty cool. Yes. I think did we not have them years ago? Were they, were they called answer machines? I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're coming full circle. No, it does sound good. Oh, it does sound thank good. you. Oh, so, I'm, I'm a little bit too young for that. Maybe you remember. <laughs> oh, Am I using a tablet? Uh, I'm not able to see the links you're posting, Simon, says Joseph. Okay, uh, Joseph, you should see a, a tab. Um, it should say, it, it comes up as chat. Um, so you have probably two tabs. One is chat. Open everything up that you can see. Um, but there will be one where you can see various links and things being posted live. But uh, Joseph, don't worry. Even if you don't succeed there, we will send all these links out to you following the event in an email tomorrow morning. So uh, you don't need to scribble them all down. You will get them uh, again tomorrow in an email that I'll send out to everybody. So can I ask? Um, can I ask yeah. you the the listeners and the viewers a question? Um, just to get feedback on terms of of this webinar here and and how they enjoy this sort of content because it's it's always a bit of a risk going down sort of like the fundamentals route and talking about things like that because ultimately um, it's not something that people are interested in. Um, so is this now that they've seen this sort of content? Is this the type of thing that they would like to see more of? Or and, and be honest, be completely honest. Or is it something that really kind of doesn't interest you, and you'd rather just go back to the charts? Because I'm just, I just like to gauge the market in terms of what people are looking for. Because you know we can try and sort of give people what we think that they need. But if they're not going to listen to it anyway, then we need to focus on being better in terms of the stuff that they want. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? 
Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, people are just replying already, which is great. Uh, Wynne says, yes, more of this. Uh, always looking for new approaches, Peter says. Uh, yes, says Anne. We'd like to see more uh, technical analysis and fundamentals, and fundamentals says Nick. Um, I think you should explain where you get the fundamental data from, uh, and perhaps uh, comments Anthony. Uh, yes, we can do that. That's actually again. covered in the course as well, by the way. But we can Great. do more of that in future webinars for sure. But that's, but that's why we gave away the course as well, because we were kind of conscious that we would show you this fantastic trade, but we wouldn't have enough time in the 14 minutes to then go into all of the details. So that's why we've given you the course as well, so that you can then go and see the detail of all of that. Uh, yes, lots of comments. Thanks. Thank you for taking the time to, to type in the replies. Lots feeding in. There is a theme here um, with... Um, Martin saying, yeah, fundamentals are useful. It's the combination of fundamentals and technical. More people seem to be leaning towards this, looking to say we must keep fundamentals in there uh, and not uh, go 100% technicals. Um, Benjamin says, personally, I'm a short-term day trader. I use very little fundamentals, but I do see how important it is to be aware of. I think it adds to the diversify of webinars available here. That's great, Benjamin. Thanks. That's what we're um, trying maybe to do. Just just a comment to Benjamin, actually. Um, even from a short-term perspective, and you know, I, I prefer short-term trading myself, so I understand completely where you're coming from. But Benjamin, one of the things that you might find helps you, even with your short-term trading, is looking at the fundamental to gauge sentiment going into a day. Um, so if you know that sentiment is particularly negative towards something, then you can position yourself to be short. And if when the trade starts to set up for the day, you can see that actually the market's not going short, then that's actually a bigger reason to get long because you know that the sentiment is short, but clearly um, it's, um, it's not reacting the way that it should be, and hence that's a, an indication to go a different way. Fundies, essential for trading long term, says Richard. I've great, never heard of referred to as fundies. I'll, I'll use that going forward, uh, if I may, uh, Richard. Uh, I thought it was very useful, says John. Giuseppe, normally you only use fundamentals for equities. And Catherine says, I think it's great. Okay, I think we have a, we do have a theme here, and I think we've, we've, we've stuck it right, uh, Alex, with this presentation. Oh, and uh, excellent. You're, you're appealing to, uh, to, to what people are looking for. Thank uh, you very much. I do tend to... Yeah, Benjamin's just coming back to you. He says, uh, I do tend to do that when I build a position during the day, but with my scalps, it's only useful before and to close the major news announcements. Yeah, okay. Before fair in the close, yeah. Cool. How does the, Alex, in your view, the, the, the recent sort of push for the regulators to, uh, well, discourage or, or perhaps ban, um, People taking more more risk from in smaller positions. You know the this this news that came out in in December from the the FCA about the spread betting companies. That's um, right. To be honest, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because the the one thing about forex is it attracts so many people to um, to the industry because it's such a low barrier to entry, and what inevitably you get is people not understand, like jumping in because you can open an account with like a hundred pounds, but not understanding leverage properly, not understanding risk and killing themselves very quickly. And to some people, a hundred pound might be a lot of money. You know, it might be kind of like their, their last gasp attempt at doing something. So I don't necessarily think it's the worst thing in the world. If you want to trade larger leverage, you know, from, from what I can see, they're only talking about spread betting companies. So it doesn't, count for the regular brokers like you know an FXCM or something like that so if you really want high leverage there's always going to be a way for you to access it um, but I don't think it's a bad thing you know my brother and I are always low leveraged in our positions you know you we're not going to take a position that's 100 to 1 leverage that's just retarded to us so yeah I agree I agree it's, I mean it's caused a lot of debate obviously within the industry and uh, it's something that's come up on conversations I've had with, with speakers and presenter, presenters the last month. Um, but I, I tend to take that position as well. Um, I, you know, I, I, I sometimes swither on how much regulation uh, is good. Uh, obviously, we, 
have a, a sort of a society where we encourage self-regulation and uh, you know going down that route of having ev everything absolutely regulated um, tends to hinder that uh, motivation to self-regulate the market but we do want to, to avoid yeah, I mean, people I think you've got to have the right balance don't you at the end of the day you have to I think that you that you need it to an extent because if you go back to like 2005 even as recent as that um, for those of you that were involved in the FX markets, you know, some of the brokers, they were absolute flipping cowboys, like seriously. Um, some of the stuff that they did was ridiculous. You don't see that as much anymore, but back then it wasn't good. So regulation definitely has a role to play. Mm -hmm. What leverage would you recommend, uh, Wynn's asking, just as a, a general question? Well, leverage is, it really depends on your position size and your stop size as to how much leverage you can take in a position. Um, you know, if you have closer stops, then you're able to take a larger position and, how, and hence use larger leverage. Um, whereas if you're taking a, a longer term position, then you need to use less leverage because you're going to have a larger stop. So it's not really, I can't really say, you know, X leverage is what you should use. Um, to give you a figure with our equities trading, we typically don't really venture above four or five to one leverage. Four or five. And uh, Ian said FXCM has a good article on the website that shows that traders on high leverage rarely end up profitable, whereas the lower leverage traders are more successful. So well, there you there go. Are. And there's actually a really interesting, there's, it might be the same article, Ian, um, where they talk about the fact that a lot of traders, um, or the, well, I'm not going to say the majority, but a good proportion of retail traders are actually right on their direction of their trades. I don't know how they measure this um, and over what time period, but they're right on their direction of the trade. And I'm sure many of you listening have probably experienced this as well, but your timing is just completely poor. Um, and what you can do by taking lower leverage is you can uh, allow yourself to take larger stop losses and withstand some of the market fluctuations to allow the market enough room and enough time to move into your direction and make you money. Um, I, I really recommend that you guys try that if you haven't already. As our friend Steve Ruffley says, it's not about being right, it's about being right at the right time. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, but by being, by being lower leveraged and being, being smaller, you remove some of that need to be right at the right time because you say, well, you, you kind of get into a position, you say, well, I accept that I'm a retail trader and I'm probably not going to get the timing right. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to counter that by taking a smaller position size and give myself enough room to be able to let the trade make me money. You know, that's If we think about why people make money in a demo account, it's because they don't really care how far the market goes against them. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm recommending that, um, but inevitably the market comes back in their direction eventually. And you can kind of mirror that by taking smaller position sizes. Uh, it's, it's very, very different when you're in live market mode uh, compared to the demo. Um, that, that's very true. Uh, and surely this, this tracks back as well to this idea of starting capital. And uh, I think Zaheer and uh, David have also sort of echoed this this morning. That, uh, starting capital is an important factor. Um, it allows you to maybe take smaller trades. Absolutely. Push more, push more. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, I agree completely. Um, Jimmy, uh, oh, Jimmy Young, uh, he is joining us. Um, he's up early. Good morning, Jimmy. I know you're calling in from the US. Regards to Alex, hey, greatly, great guy, highly recommended. Uh, Jimmy's going to be joining us later on. Um, is he on the line now? He's on the he's on the line. Yeah, so you can you can oh, talk. Let me say you know, hello, Jimmy. Jim Jimmy, if you can hear me, how are you? Jimmy, for everybody that's um, joining this webinar, by the way, listen to what this um, guy has to say. I contacted Jimmy probably, well, over 10 years ago now. Just like we were doing well with our trading, but we just wanted to speak to a serious person in the industry. Um, and ever since then, I can honestly say that Jimmy has been pivotal um, in some of the successes and some of like helping us understand um, the way to take risk in the markets and things like that. So he's a, he's an amazing guy, um, good friend. You really should listen to what he has to say. That's great. Well, we're we're very grateful to Jim joining us again. He'll be he'll be starting in just over an hour from now at uh, 1 p.m. here in the in the UK. Well, 
Alex, Excellent. that is uh, last couple of minutes uh, before we change over. So I think I'll say our thanks on behalf of everybody. Thank you for joining us um, again, Alex. And uh, uh, certainly a few people I can see have seen they've been signing up that they're going to take the take the, the offer up uh, and get the videos and the two editions of the money file. So that Thank will be fantastic. Um, Thank you for well, having I'll take me. The yeah, absolutely. Let me stop sharing the screen. Thank you, everybody, um, and have a really great day. Thanks, Simon, and I'll speak to you soon. Many thanks, Alec. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, many thanks to Alex Ong there, uh, taking us up to midday here. Um, great presentation. So welcome to everybody that's in the room. I can see there's well over 200 people now joined us, um, which is great. Thank you for joining us. This is Simon Campbell. This is Round the Clock Trader, and we are live about to go across to George Halmy at Click Events. Uh, trending profits, how to find the big moves, surely something we all uh, want to know the answer to. And uh, if you've missed sessions this morning, um, we have recorded everything so far and you'll be getting access to these recordings uh, just as quickly as we possibly can after the event. We have two websites, londonschooloftrading.com where we post recordings um, but we are also developing uh, roundtheclocktrader.com um, where we will also have uh, recordings uh, posted there so you can go to either of these two websites. Um, equally as, a, as an attendee you will be the first however to receive uh, the direct link which will take you straight to the recordings rather than having to wait three or four days for the other recordings to be processed. The uh, the, the, the beauty of registering and sending always to these events is that you'll get the automated link from GoToWebinar, which is the platform we use for this event, and uh, that will take you straight back to the recordings, and you can scroll forward and back to uh, the sessions that you've missed or want to uh, or want to hear again. So thank you very much uh, for joining us. Let's move on with the day, and um, we're going to get uh, over to George and uh, wish him a uh, happy new year, a happy belated new year.